The Week in Review with David Davis. Hello, I'm David Davis. Uh, this is the first of uh, some weekly uh, YouTube broadcasts we're going to do. It's an experiment. I'm going to talk about the things I'm interested in, what's happening in the week or the past week or the coming week. Uh, mostly politics, of course, but also some other things. Maybe medical news, scientific and technology news, maybe even a bit of history from time to time. Now, this week, the big issue has been the Queen's speech. Lots of bills in it, 38 bills, some of them very controversial, um, most of them I agree with, uh, all designed to try and improve the lives of people in Britain. But it will only work, it'll only work if the underlying economy works, if we get growth uh, for people's income, people's jobs, uh, uh, of the economy generally. Uh, and in my view, taxes are too high and are likely to suppress that growth, as I said in the chamber in the Queen's speech. High taxes don't deliver growth, they stifle it. Yeah. Low taxes deliver investment. Low taxes deliver higher productivity. Therefore, low taxes deliver growth. Therefore, low taxes is the preemptive answer to stagflation, which is the biggest threat on our horizon in the coming year. One of the problems is that Bank of England forecasts uh, have been consistently wrong. Uh, for almost 18 months, uh, the bank has forecast 2% inflation in 2022, but in reality, uh, it's at 9.1%. Uh, as you'll see in this uh, presentation by the governor of the bank uh, in front of the House of Commons uh, Economic Select Committee. It's a very, very difficult place to, for us to be in. I mean, to predict and to forecast 10% inflation and then say, as we were saying a few minutes ago, uh, and there's not a lot we can do about 80% of it, as I can tell you, it is an extremely difficult place to be. I mean, we have to recognise the reality of the situation that we face. It's not just the Bank of England that gets forecasts wrong. Last year, when they were making the current tax strategy, the Treasury misforecast the tax take this year by 90 billion. Let me make it clear. They underestimated the amount of tax we get by 90 billion. Treasury forecasts are nearly always wrong. Mr David Davis. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, the Treasury, the OBR and the Bank of England, between them, produce numerous forecasts every year. When was the last time any of them got one right? <laughs> well, I, I suspect, uh, Mr Speaker, in the history of highly detailed, complicated uh, economic forecasts with a myriad of variables, there's probably not one in the entire history of the planet that has been entirely right in every respect. But that is not an argument. Our biggest need is to avoid stagflation. To do that, we have to have a high growth economy. That's fundamental. If you've got a low growth economy, you really can't get out of stagflation without a lot of pain. Uh, so we've got to achieve that. We have got to return to being the party of low taxes and also the party of a home only democracy. All of these contribute to a successful economy. One of the key things about being a conservative is we believe in a property only democracy. When I was in my 20s, two thirds of my cohort were buying their own home. Today, that's only a quarter. One of the reasons is houses are so expensive and that leads us to the statistic of the week. And that is 37% of young people buying their own homes need help from the bank of mum and dad. They can no longer do it on their own two feet. On the medical technology front the last few weeks, uh, one really important piece of information has come up, and that's the question of the malaria vaccine. The World Health Organization estimates that something like 630,000 people are killed annually by malaria, most of them children. Uh, last year, the World Health Organization approved the world's first or first effective malaria vaccine. And this is one of uh, the MIT Tech Review's 10 breakthrough technologies of 2022. Uh, a, a, a vaccine w which will dramatically change the lives of many people, principally in Africa, but many people in tropical areas uh, who currently suffer from the plague of malaria. Every week we'll try and find something of interest which has not got the coverage we think it should in uh, the mainstream media. And this week it's a sporting event. Uh, the uh, British hockey team, uh, ice hockey team, uh, was competing against Norway. Norway, one of the best in the world. 
and we came back from 3-0 down to 3-3. Forced the Norwegians to uh, resolve the game on penalties. Unfortunately, they won. But I just think it's fantastic for us to give Norway such a close run on their national game. If you like it, please uh, click on like, uh, and if you like it a lot, then subscribe. We'll make a decision in a few months whether we continue with it, and obviously, if you like it, we will.